Astro that was like very, I guess like aggressive, constantly pushing, and I just felt like it was a bit hard at the time. So I kind of wanted to discuss it and see exactly, like, really break down, especially the early part of the game. Okay, so you're not really worried holistic, like you're comfortable in your current journey at the moment. Like you know, you don't really need a holistic review. You just want to look specifics in this one. Look at specifics. Yeah, like, I mean, well, I, I wouldn't say I'm comfortable. I've actually, like, I think I've been playing a lot worse than I was last okay. time we uh, had a discussion. Okay. But this one just felt, like, really weird and uh, wasn't as clear in the early part of the game, like, what exactly I should do. And then I guess the reason I don't need to look later is just because, I mean, maybe a bit later, but our team ended up getting, like, okay. way too far ahead. And okay. So, I don't know, the game wasn't much of a game and, anymore. And what's your focus point being, like, at the moment out of interest? Like, how, where have you been directing your attention? Um, I w definitely like early laning. I've been trying to kind of play a bit more aggressive, fast pace, okay. and not as much of a kind of playing to not lose lane on okay. Winter, and just hoping that everyone else does fine, and then like scaling into the mid game. I've been trying to go a bit harder in the early game. Okay, let's take a look. So, what was your hypothesis here? So normally, what I think about in lanes like this is like I'm gonna get well, actually which game was yeah like normally i think i'm gonna slow build two and then uh, uh then like let it bounce and i just want it outside of my tower or if they like contest it then like too much then i'll let them push me like and try to hold the wave okay so it so looks I like yes we shoved this one into you so you kind of happy to yeah, hold it on so your side yeah i let him because like i don't know when i think of other champions like you know other assassins melee assassins whatnot um i, I love that but then I kind of noticed, and when I was reviewing this, I was like, does that work as well on Yasuo? Because he can actually just push it out so hard, and I find myself, like, tanking a lot. Like, almost, like, getting hit by him and the minions, just because he has the ability to wave clear better than... If Vod's a little laggy, like, but... Yeah. Like Fizz or Silish or something. And if Vod's, um... I'm pretty sure... The I think it's just those two times. It's just those two times. Okay. I think okay. it gets better after that. I Yeah, I noticed that. This yeah. part, like... Um, okay. And so, so your question was essentially, is it good to do this versus Yasuo? Yeah, like, I just kind of find... Yeah, like, just because it's mm. harder to hold the verse comparatively okay. to, like, some of the other guys. Okay, what we'll do, we'll take a look. We'll see how it pans out, and then we can kind of go a little bit more in depth here. Just kind of get a bit of a, a gauge of what the hell goes on, what ha actually happened here. Okay. Yeah, like, like in, even in that, like, last bit where I'm getting hit, like, I just feel like I'm standing up too much because I'm just trying to make sure the wave doesn't crash. Mm. By the way, the, the Victor passive goes through the wind wall. The auto attack? Yeah. Like, you could have just walked up and autoed Yasuo yeah, here. I did not know that. That's good to know. Kind of bad that I didn't run into it. That's okay. Okay, so I can see you're getting shoved in a lot. Nice heavy trades. I mean, this is coherent with your setup. He takes a tower hit. In a nice little position. You get his flash. He goes ham. We flash. Excellent. Okay. I actually think you were fine. If you, I think if you just ran away and de aggroed the minions, I actually think you were completely fine here, you know? Or were they already aggro? Oh, yeah. uh, like, I'm not sure. Mm. I think also, and I did this one other time in the game too. Maybe not, I maybe already did. I don't respect his ability to turn enough. Like, I figured out enough HP that I was not scared at all of dying here. And then Yeah, okay. Okay, so before we go on from this point, let's take a look at the wave. So, first things first. I, I really like your adaptive game plan in the sense that, like, if he doesn't touch the wave... Um, you could kind of walk up, build, and, and potentially even two, uh, three stack. Really, I, I mean, I don't. I'm not a big fan of a two stack into a into a Yasuo. I would prefer a three stack. Um, the reason being, eh, you just don't get much with a two stack. Like, you just don't get much. Like, what do you, you what do you really get? Like, you can't harass under tower all that much. You're just gonna give Yasuo a long lane to play through. He's just gonna probably shove play off the long the, play in the deep lane. You're gonna be overextended. It just doesn't. It doesn't feel good. Um, in a lot of melee matchups, I'm either trying to hold the wave in the middle and then turn it into like a three stack 
or I'm going to allow them to shove you, shove me in, exactly like you said. I just don't like doing two stacks. Two stacks just don't get, just doesn't feel good for me. I don't feel like I get enough from it. Um, my, so this is just kind of yeah. like my thought on that was I was kind of thinking almost like an Irelia where like his level two he can run you down, but I guess even like if he tries to the minion aggro is enough that he's not gonna win. Like if I, um, like when it hits two, if there's like a big wave. You just won't go in at well that's what i'm stuff. saying well if you're three stacking yeah the wave he he won't be in that position that, okay that won't be yeah, a thing fair. um okay. but but what i would say is um okay so i want to i want to give you an example of a matchup that is played very similar to this and, and kind of break it down for you so rise via a rise versus aurelia is a matchup that i studied recently right and and the way this my, my initial hypothesis when i first looked at this matchup because I'm not a Rise player. Like before I knew it, I, I my initial hypothesis was that wouldn't Rise if he pushed up be scared? Like wouldn't you kind of just get all in by the Aurelia at level three and you'd just die? That's what I thought. And I did a little, a little bit of research and, and, and before that actually, sorry, I th because I thought that Rise was a lot of threat from Aurelia, I thought that Rise would have to just like last hit and allow Aurelia to kind of shove you in type thing. And what I realized is that no good risers played the wave like that. They, they never played the lane like that. What they did is that they always kind of, they, they harassed level one pretty hardcore with autos and ease. And then they would do some form of a two or three stack and harass, play super aggressive. And then, and I'm like, wait, but would they die? But you know what they did? They always took exhaust. And this exhaust was literally the difference between them being able to die and not every time. So the exhaust allowed them to play this aggressive style and shut down the Aurelia in the early lane. Now, my hypothesis in a matchup like this, if you want to play a very fast and aggressive style and use offense as your defense and do that, you know, shove up, three stack, you know, poke under tower, that sort of thing, exhaust is actually very, very useful. It's very, very useful. I don't think ghost gives you much. I mean, it's okay, but I think actually, for the Sorry. I almost always do take exhaust in this matchup. I usually go phase rush exhaust into Yasuo matchups. I'm not sh like that's how I have right. normally been doing it. The only reason I took ghost is because there's like a Darius jungle, and I right. just wanted to be able to match his ghost. But yeah, I, I think airy plus exhaust would be really good if you wanted to play this aggressive style. Okay. I actually just feel like if you're not going the if you're not going like a, 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 like a, a combat summon, you're not going an ignite or an exhaust or something like that. I feel like you have to just do what we said which is kind of hold the wave in the middle and like allow like keep it neutral state and then look if he doesn't touch it at all again turn it into a three stack or if he does then just let the astro shove you in now okay a lot of the time though something to keep in mind is that like if yasuo wants to like shove you in he's probably going to shove you in he's going to trade hp to shove you in and, and, and it's perfectly normal for you to feel pressured in this situation but the reason this is okay for you is because it can't stay like this forever. Like, it's worth sacrificing HP to kind of hold the wave here. Because, again, he's going to be under a metric ton of threat if the wave stays in this in this situation. He has to try and get the wave out. So, yes, it's going to feel a little bit awkward. But you just got to do your best. Then the wave with auto attacks, go for high value ease, that sort of thing. Peel back into your range creeps exactly like you're doing here. So, you actually did a pretty good job here, man. The only the only minor criticisms that I had were that you you were sometimes walking up like this, way too aggressively, especially when you didn't have your Q, and then getting into melee range with your E, with a few moments like this, and you weren't fa factoring in that he could like go, walk over here and E and EQ through these these range creeps, and there was a few moments where um you missed order opportunity. I mean this one was an order opportunity here. So like moments here and there, but across the board it was pretty it was pretty well played, man. It was pretty well played. Because you got him in a beautiful situation here. But he just did a really good job of outplaying you. And I, I mean, I, I wouldn't really overemphasize this. Because it's okay. so goddamn close. So does that kind of answer some of your questions there? Yeah. But just keep in mind that shoving style is a very high skill cap way of playing the matchup. And it requires very good jungle tracking. Um, it requires very good... And into a high threat jungle, I wouldn't do it personally. But um, yeah, it just requires a lot of uh, a very uh, good jungle tracking, good threat assessment, good wave management. Okay, so like you're saying, you would never do it into you know, like a 
Zach Leeson type thing? Uh, no, into Zach probably I would, but into in Leeson's not that scary. I'd say more into like an Elise or like Jarvan and Rex size. Okay, like the super. Yeah, yeah. The super scary ones. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at this one here. So we come back. Waves bouncing out. Um, I'm. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a rush W. There's no need to rush this W because we know that there's no way he can go behind him, is there? Because the wave's not there. I mean, I mean, there's no wave behind him to jump through through. I mean, this wave is not behind him, so he can't get through. And he's not a Katarina. He can't shump over a minion behind or anything like that. So he's got nothing. So the only way he can go here is forwards. So what you should do in this situation is just hold your W to see what he does. And then if he goes that way, you W here. If he goes this way, you W here. And if he stands his ground and, it's, and Graves is hitting him and, you know, whatever, then sure, you can just hold it. But you didn't need to use it here. So okay. a little bit yeah, of Yeah, I think I'd, I'd definitely do that a lot. I think my W usages are quite bad um, in, like, these type of matchups. Okay, so the wave's in a bit of an awkward spot. Um, yeah. Hmm. I definitely agree with this. But I kind of also... Like, I knew Graves was there, and then I did not know Darius was here, but... Okay, there's a few little little micro details and also other, some other details. So, number one, you could have easily called your Graves here to help you get this next wave out. That's one thing to consider. Number two, um, in this situation here... What you want to do is you want to really focus a lot of your attention and your mental stack on avoiding the Q3. So notice here, like just as soon as he gets that Q3, walk back already, like preemptively, because you know what he's going to do, but you are busy auto attacking. Screw that. You can't do that. Go for like a max range E if need be and just walk back. Alternatively, what you also could have done because there is a big minion wave here, you actually could have E'd going for like a high value E on the minion through him, stood your ground in the middle of the minion wave, use your C pots a bit earlier, and then W'd yourself. That also potentially could have worked, but it is a little scary. You should never also be getting hit by these these Q3s. Like focus your attention on, a yeah. board, on avoiding these Q3s. Um, the other thing I've noticed here, you're, you're walking way too far up. You didn't need to walk this far up here to go for the E, and your W usage. Notice how Yasuo is only ever going to have kill threat on you if he goes this way, right? So, like, your W doesn't really make sense, does it? You should put it behind me. Yeah, you should, exactly. You should be putting behind you, and then you walk through your W. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. But, yeah, this is not really what where you want the wave into a Yasuo in general. So that's why I probably would have personally called the, the Graves to help me get the wave out. Yeah, and that's why I kind of like, that was all that was on my mind is like, mm. I need to fix this wave. Yeah. And then kind of trolled doing so. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, another thing to keep in mind, and it's worth noting, is that Graves is probably one of the lowest kill threat junglers into a Yasuo because of how good Yasuo is into Graves with the wind wall. So, a lot of the problems or the feelings that you're experiencing right now are exacerbated. Like, the threat that he's able to impose onto you is exacerbated because of you having a Graves. Right? So, if that okay. if that wasn't a Graves and that was anything anything else, really, it's a different story, right? Because Yasuo will be a lot more threatened to E aggressively. Okay. That's something to note as well. Sense. So you always got to content, like understand the context of the situation because there's games where Yasuo, you have the wave on your side and Yasuo will never be able to unfreeze it. Like, he doesn't give a fuck now, does he? Like, he can do whatever he wants. Like, it's not like he's versing a Zack. It's not like he's versing like something that can just get, go in and not doesn't care about the wind wall at all. Yeah. This is a beautiful little moment to... You should be holding this 100%. Yep, beautiful. Perfect. Great. But at this point, like, you're behind the eight ball. Like, if I'm in this situation, I've already accepted reality that I'm not playing to kill Yasuo anymore. Like, once you mess up into a Yasuo in the early lane, I go into full farm mode, by the way. 
Okay, so don't even, like, bother, like, trying to poke him out or anything. Oh, yeah, like, I, I mean, unless my jungler has a metric trying to thread onto this guy, and I can make him low and, you know, that sort of thing, sure. But especially when my jungler has low threat, this guy's got his vamp scepter, you've got dick all CS, like, you're, you're behind the eight ball, like, you got to adapt and realize that you're not the wing con anymore. Like, you've got, I think your vein's doing a really good job topside. You don't want jungle attention anymore. All you want to do is just farm, farm, farm. Get to your lost chapter, be a strong AP threat later on because you're basically the sole AP, and then you're going to be all good. Now, this ends up working out. Um, to be honest, I mean, it works, so it is what it is. For me personally, I just wouldn't really want this sort of thing, or at least I'm, I wouldn't. If it happens, it happens, but I'm not searching for it. I'm completely fine to just chill. Yeah, like, you don't actually want the... Because I know I'm... It's, yeah, I, th I know it's really hard for me to be the wing corner in this situation. Okay. Okay. So, moving on. Uh, I mean, Sork, it's an interesting one. Why Sork's over Lost Chapter in this case? What was your reasoning? I don't think I had enough gold. Did I? Oh, I'm I sure did. you did. Oh, I did. I did. Oh. What was the reason? Um, probably it was just like a more defensive being able to move mm. faster i don't know i tend to just like um i do actually usually try to rush two two boots into like yasuo yone that like okay. are so fast mm. or because they like rush two two boots so i don't know mm. i guess you're saying i shouldn't um as well as, i mean it's more about the reasoning behind it My, the premise between sorks sorks is like a, it's obviously more burst and um it's more burst and it's yeah, obviously more movement speed, but it, it, it's you have less. I mean, less mana, less ability haste, less AP, less wave clear, right? So, what I would say is, I generally go Sorks if I'm snowballing, or I know I can like dominate the one v one, or the, I have a lot of threat onto this guy in general. So you got to ask yourself: Is this is this is, is this Sorks rush gonna actively change the amount of kill threat you have on this guy? If it does, great. If it doesn't. And the lane you feel as though the lane is going to be slow regardless, and it's going to be like a, you're just going to farm and you're going to be left on an island and you know that sort of thing. Then lost chapter makes more sense. So think of it, think of it like that. Like it depends how you're playing the lane and what you're planning to do. Okay. So in this case, I mean, I, st I can't tell what your interpretation is at this point, but I would say for me, I prefer lost chapter um, because a lot of the poke I'll land probably won't be overly impactful anyway at this point with the Vam Scepter plus. I wouldn't expect Graves to be constantly visiting me. Um, but ultimately, it really depends on, on how comfortable you felt at this stage in the lane. No, I think that makes sense. I honestly didn't really think of it like that. When you put it like that. And I that's... Think, yeah, and that's why I, I go Sorks go Rush. Sorry, sorry, sorry to cut you. What were you saying? Oh, no, I was just saying, like, when you put it that way, mm. I think I would... Um, I would have went Lost Chapter. Right, yeah. Uh, what rank is this by the way plat 4 okay um and th that's actually why by the way I go Sorks Rush on Syndra um because again I play to kill the lane I don't want like a long X in the lane I just want to kill them at 6 you know do you rarely do it on Victor uh yeah I mean I don't play that much Victor at the moment but I would say that it depends. Again, it just depends. It depends. Like, I feel like if I've got the lead in a mage v mage matchup, it's super good. But if oh, not, okay. or something in the lane slot, or maybe even to a melee that I can dominate, it makes sense. Like, if you're using a Kiana or something like that, you can just annihilate them. Um, but if it's like a slower lane and I can't kill them and it's just, we're just playing wave clear for wave clear, then Lost Chapter's great. I think actually that's one of the other reasons I did it. I've, I've been seeing it a lot on like uh, VODs I've been watching mm. of like, uh, like, you know, challenger like you know best mid laners in the world yeah kind of thing. <laughs> a lot of odds playing victor and they, it seems like they always are rushing like tier two boots yeah so i don't know if you're ahead it's really really good like if you got if you dominate that yasuo in the early game it would make sense all right so let's take a look at this one what what happens here so same thing we, we're quite disrespectful to the to the yasuo here um and stand up quite far even without our e and our r available um, in this situation where you don't have your E available, I'd be quite conservative, especially since he's already stacked his Q once and he can get it up really, really quickly. Um, yeah. So I probably would have sat back and maybe a little bit and waited for my E to come back up. 
Um, but we do a really nice flash into a beautiful W R R Q. So this was really nice. I think if uh, I R slightly sooner, I think it actually like kills because mm -hmm. I think I used my R after. Yeah, it was a little bit slow. Yeah. Potentially might have got one more tick. Okay. Okay. So out of interest, Kamikaze, have you been in Plat? What did you finish last season? Um, I, I think I finished Plat 3 maybe. I peaked Plat 2. Yeah. And, and what did we cover last session? If you... Um, yeah, that one was, like, it was a bit more matchup specific, but honestly, I was playing a lot better back then, and, like, I don't know, it was um, kind of just understanding how I want to play, uh, it was a Nivea matchup, and okay. then um, some, like, the mid-game fights and stuff we talked about, but yeah. I was playing better, so a lot of it was, like, what do you mean by that? Higher by rank. What do you mean by playing better? I mean, I was just, like, winning games, I wasn't, like, getting stomped, I feel like I was almost always the more useful mid laner. Like occasionally, I wouldn't be, but like over my first like 25 30 games, I had like a 75% win rate, and now I'm kind of on Victor specifically, and now I'm kind of just doing a lot worse. I'm losing and a lot more. Why do you think that is? Being worse. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I feel okay. like I just go in these like weird cycles almost of playing better and then playing worse. Out of interest, um, when you were doing that, you know, you're on that, you're doing really well. Did anything change that period of time, like, in terms of your focus? Like, were you focusing on a particular area or not focusing on a particular area? Then you started focusing on a particular area? Did anything happen in terms of your process? Um, I don't remember exactly. Like, I know now, I'm, I, th I don't think I was playing quite as, or, like, trying to play quite as aggressive. Okay. Um, but at the same time, I feel like I was actually getting more early leads. Um, I think the other thing that I've kind of noticed in some of my recent like games that I've been reviewing is I'm kind of, I mean this one's harder to tell because I'm just getting constantly pushed, but I think I'm not moving to skirmishes and stuff enough. Mm. I kind of just think about that earlier today. And out of interest, have you been losing most lanes at the moment? Str or like not losing lanes in the specific say the one v one, but just getting behind in the early game? Would you say that's like? No, I would no. say it's like pretty fifty fifty. Fifty it's... fifty. And then yeah, and then. There's some games where I'm getting like really far ahead and I'm just losing yeah. the game when I'm like, there's no way I should be losing this game. And do you dot him any ganks out of interest? Um, depends, honestly. Like, okay. some, I, I, like sometimes, yeah. Like I think sometimes I'm a lot better at really paying attention, and then other times I just zone in too much on, uh, like you know, the particular lane, but. So, yeah, like it depends on the day, I guess, or okay. the week. Okay. All right. I, I've kind of said enough of this VOD. I, I want to I talk about a few things. Um, a few of you in this call might be sick of me bringing this up, but this is so important, and I can't stress this enough. It's probably my big one of my big breakthroughs in my coaching recently. If you're in Platinum, you need to internalize this. Okay. I've noticed for some reason there are certain players that steamroll through plat. They steamroll through plat and they can get to D4. Not, not, not like we're not talking like a, in a month, but in a few months they can, they can, they can close this gap across a few month period. Um, certain players get stuck specifically at low plat, plat three, plat four for a long ass time. Some players go from plat all the way to plat four all the way to plat plat two plat one and plateau there for a while you get these all these different types of journeys and um and what i've noticed is that just in general like the the way the players think there's like a trend between the way the players actually think and view the game between like like here comparatively to these two and what i mean by this is um it's kind of how like it's how you approach learning matchups. So, how do I view it? When I'm watching you play, you're you're extremely what's the word? You lack anticipation. So you're playing very reactive, but not reactive in the sense that like you know what's coming. Like you're simply reacting. You're not seeing things coming. 
if that makes sense. So like, this is an example. I don't think this is a great example, but you can kind of see it. You didn't, you genuinely didn't expect this, did you? No, like, right? it was not on my mind at all. It was not on your mind at all. Great. So when I look at this, in my mind, it's a no brainer because he, the guy knows that you have ghosts. He's going to die anyway. He only has one thing to do. Right? Yeah. So, so the difference between me and you is that I'm expecting this and you're reacting to this and you're having to rely on your reaction times. I don't have good reaction times as a player, but I don't need to because I anticipate everything. And what I mean by this and, and, and the way this actually, uh, I guess, manifests in a lot of people's games is they make a mistake or they get outplayed or something just poor happens, a bad trade, whatever it might be. And they think they think that they understand what happens or what happened, but they don't get it. They don't they don't look at it from the other person's perspective. Like they look at this mistake, right? And be like, oh, you know, I just should have I just should have I just could have um, maybe autoed faster, or I could have turned around faster, or, or I could have maybe flashed earlier, or whatever it might be. But the real learning is, how could I have known that he's going to do that? Like, how? what would this guy's mindset be like? Like, how could I foresee this next time in this situation? So you, if you actually look at a lot of these scenarios in this lane, in this game, right? If you actually look at the negative, like this situation here, it was here, right? Well, you know, if, if you know what Yasuo wants to do, it's a no brainer that you should call for Graze, right? Yeah. Like, you know that Yasuo wants to run you down the long lane. You don't have no sums. So knowing, it's like, we know what we want. We, we don't like this wave state. We also know what Yasuo wants. Yasuo smells blood in the waters. Well, if we put two and two together, we should probably call for assistance and probably get the wave out together. And here as well, he has Q3 available. Notice how you're reacting to his E rather than already anticipating that he's about to fuck your shit up right now. You see that? Yeah. So, like, that, that's... It's a small difference. It looks like a small difference, but it's actually fucking ginormous. Because I'm never, I'm not reacting to anything that he's doing. I already know it's a no-brainer what he's going to do here. So I'm already thinking three, four seconds in the future every single time. Now the way to get better at this is you don't look at it from your perspective. You look at it from their perspective. Why wouldn't Yasuo do this? Now, in order to, in order to, and, and, and I spoke about this this morning in the session I did today, but. Nathan rose this on a recent BBC episode, like that problem solving mindset. And, and the way I interpret that in, in my own words is kind of like, in order to really look at a problem. Okay. Actually, I'm going to use chess and as an analogy. Now I don't know jack shit about chess and I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert. I don't fuck all about chess. Right. But if I played chess and I've done this in other things, I always like to look at it from their perspective. What, what would it feel like to verse me? So if I made a move, right? I made a move. I would, I, I would look at that and I would think that's objectively the right play to do. But then to stress test my, my decision, I would also want to turn the board around and then look at it. Like, what would I do from their perspective? How would I feel if someone made that decision into me? Now, when you shift that perspective from getting out of your own head and thinking about what you want, me, 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 and think about them... That's when your understanding of the game becomes a lot more sophisticated and a lot more nuanced and you're able to develop this sense of intuition, this more refined intuition as well as a, like a, again, you can anticipate things rather than simply react. And, and this is actually why I fundamentally believe certain players stay in Platinum for a very, very long time. They know what they want. They're very good at knowing what they want. They even have decent fundamentals. And in order to test this theory, right, to see if this is actually true, if you were to verse a, 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 an X main of yours, like what's what's your last main champion? Uh, I was kind of all over the place, but mostly like Vayne. 
Okay. Well, let's say you you oh, like you mean Vayne mid. I mean, I was playing at mid, but like in the, over the last like year or whatever, I've been I was playing a lot of different champions. But yeah, okay. like if I'm playing like any of those champions. Okay, so maybe you're not the <laughs> best example for this. But generally, what you'll find is that if these players play versus their ex main champion or the other champ in their pool, they have a much much easier time. Why is that then? Why do you think that is the case? Because you know exactly what they're going to do. Exactly. You know exactly what they're going to do. But not, not, not even that. You know why. Like, you could just empathize. You know how they would be feeling. Yeah, no, I actually... Because, like, the other champion I'm playing right now is Akshan. Where, like, so many people into Akshan. But I don't ever... I almost never into Akshan. Yeah. Right, because you know how he'd be yeah, feeling in certain situations. No, I think that's actually a really good point. I should focus on that. Yeah. Like, the only time I do that is when I'm getting to, like... You know, really core ultimate champs like Malphite when you're doing team fighting or something. But I don't actually think about that from like constantly in lane. Yeah, and and, and look, I, I don't expect you to be able to do this in matchup. Like it's just it's just a long term process. So it's like it's like we got to start it now though. Like so from now on, rather than simply oh here's a mistake and that's what I should do next time. I mean, yeah, do that. But also like look at it from their perspective. Like what were they trying to do? Like, what would it feel like to be in their shoes? Why are they trading like that? What are they looking for? What are they trades? What does that, a yes, what a normal trade look like? And that's what's going to lead you to maybe looking at this VOD through Yasuo's lens. Like, watch this VOD, but like, kind of watch it as if you're the Yasuo. Or go on YouTube and type Yasuo versus Victor. Victor. And look at it from their shoes. How do they play it? What does it feel like to be Yasuo? And what you actually see on YouTube, by the way, you actually see, and I've done this before, I've actually watched, say I, I struggled with this matchup, you would go on YouTube and then you would see Yasuo struggle in the early lane versus Victor. And then I would say to myself, holy shit, this Victor's dominating this Yasuo. What did he do differently me, to me? Then you would know what it feels like to be dominated by Victor as Yasuo. That is a game changer. Okay. So this I'll is just, that. yeah, try this out. And like, I, I really think this will help you. And regardless, I think it's a great thing to do um whether or like and we'll see what happens and i think give it a go from now on hopefully because over the next say three weeks right you'll start to see the same champs a lot like at the end of the day you're probably going to verse most of the time the same 10 to 15 mid champs most of the time like there's not many champions that you're going to be versing in a meta so like if you if you can like really research take time to research each and every one of these you know, over time, it fucking makes a bit, uh, it has a big, big impact, and it helps you lot in the long run because the same champs come in and out of the meta all the time. So, like once you, like for me, I once I figured out how Fizz works, and I played a lot of Fizz myself. I I've never forgotten how Fizz works and how Fizz will be thinking. It's there forever. So, yeah. how, all right. So keep me updated. Let me know how that goes, and and um, hopefully this puts you on the right path, man. Okay. Thanks, coach.